Hi, I'm Mario Evan, and you're listening to Talk Trot, a weekly inspired edutainment podcast discussing the things that most people are afraid to, but from a Jamaican perspective. From relationships, sex and sexuality, to the ins and outs of entrepreneurship, in this space we speak about almost anything with the intention to inspire, educate, entertain, and create a fair and balanced space where your truth shall become your power and set you free. Yalo, yalo, yo! Oh, wow, that was a really bad bounty killer impersonation, and it didn't go down very well. Well, anyway, welcome to episode number seven of Talk Truth, and this is your boy, Mario Evan, and as you know, it's always a pleasure being with you every single Sunday. And this is a very special episode for me because it's my first episode that's being sponsored. And this episode was recorded at and is sponsored by The Hub Coworking. Are you a self-employed Jamaican or an entrepreneur in need of a workspace? Well, a co-working space may be just what you're looking for and The Hub is just that. Co-working is designed to solve the problems of removing traditional office overheads by providing a low-cost, aesthetically pleasing space with all the amenities of an office. All this while facilitating an environment of collaboration, community, and a network that can propel your business to the next level. Services of the hub include complimentary coffee, mm, pep you up in the morning, complimentary Wi-Fi, flexible membership plans, private offices and a conference room, a meeting lounge, your own business address, receptionist, printing, copying, scanning and a myriad of affiliate services. So find out more about the hub by visiting their website at www.hubcoworkingja.com or give them a call at 876 831 Two seven six five or eight seven six eight three three four six one two. Oh, why don't just go pay them a visit? They're at thirty four Lady Musgrave Road, Unit Number Eighteen, Kingston Five, and in the one and only Jamaica, Jamaica. Ah, uh, yeah, the Hub Co working, working better together. So. The hobby, body, body, body. That's what I'm gonna say. The advertisement goes on even more. Um, I'm currently in the big conference room with my guest today, and um, it's very comfortable. We have AC on, and we have a bag of space, even though I just a two away. But don't worry, if you have up to 10 people, you can use a large conference room. I recommend it. Give them a call. And today's episode, we're gonna be talking about. A big topic because we're all so locked into it and it's the topic of social media and my guest today i'm gonna um tell you about him in a little bit but the way how he came onto the show was that he's one of my tweets and he is from the twitter family uh when i was starting this podcast i would throw out a lot of information asking people about topics and if they were willing to be guests and so many people gave me such good feedback in terms of things they wanted to talk about and being brave and bold enough to talk trot so this is actually someone who i'm meeting for the very first time but he is a young man and his name is akeem beckford akeem welcome to talk truth thank you so much for having me uh well the name akeem beckford uh currently pursuing a bachelor's degree in business administration as a marketing major and minoring in international business uh apart from the academics i'm just i'm really easy going fun loving and it's 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 the best way to, to, to attach myself to life i would say easy going and fun loving and do you attribute that from where you're from where did you grow up oh saint mary the country life you should it, have seen me where we come from <laughs> islington Cableton. right yeah i think that's home that's, that's home, home. isn't that Oh, no, but St. Mary. St. Mary. All right. Uh, that's cool. Uh, what, was, what was life like growing up for you? Life like growing up, well, growing up with your grandmother because, you know, mom goes to work and it's summertime. So growing up with your grandmother, it's really, it's really an experience. You really get to, uh, well, you're helping out a lot in the house, but you get to go out a lot and climb trees and go to the river. And I mean, it's a whole experience. You grew with your granny. I mean, go out into the yard and oh, the Yes, and you can't go past the gate. And she, you know, she, she, she see you past the gate. It's a problem, but Ooh, otherwise. Otherwise, it's otherwise it's good. It's fine. All right, that sounds like, that sounds nice still. I'm a Kingston boy, but I understand country, so I know that's the, um, tell me, how old are you? I'm... <laughs> Did you, can, can we talk about this? Of course. I'm currently 20 years old. Just turned 20 not too long ago. So I'm pretty... 
What is it? Young and green? Young and green. Well, this is wonderful Fresh. because I'm not young and green. I'm in my <laughs> 30s. And I think it's going to make this social media conversation even that much more fun. Um, I didn't put this in the title, but I kind of wanted to do talk about the do's, the don'ts, annoyances, pet peeves, and all the other crap that we deal with in between. And as somebody in the public, I, I get a lot of random messages from random people. But we'll get there. Um, so tell me if you agree with me that these are the platforms for social media. I will say Facebook. Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat. You'd include YouTube? I would, just because it has a conversational component where you can uh, respond to each other and comment on videos and everything. And you can also stream live on YouTube. Right, so it can become a, a back and so forth. It can a become a back and forth thing. And now I would say the status portion of WhatsApp is now social media. Makes it social media. It's not just a messaging app now, is it? Drives me crazy. <laughs> Same. <laughs> the other thing I didn't ask you about is why you're so passionate. You actually... Tell me about the marketing club. So right now, I'm currently the digital uh, director for the UTech Future Marketers Association. And there, we help young minds, young entrepreneurs, young marketers develop and, you know, give them a push into the world of marketing. You know, the do's and the don'ts, what they'll need, the skills and the tools. And it's really just so empowering. We get speakers every week that uh, they see on TV, they hear on radio all the time. Could and it really helps them to visualize what they could be doing and what might be blocking them from that as well. Interesting. But all right, so as a director, do you are you actually the man behind the social media platforms? Yes. So you do the posts? The posts. You create the copy, the text, ev everything? Everything. We might outsource a, a digital, uh, somebody who designs, a, a, a proper designer for content creation, but right. we work alongside them as well. So like when all of them people there will run um, page for business, make a mistake, you could be that person. Like oh, you could have accidentally yes. send somebody something wrong. Oh, yes. And you also would be the person who responds to any comments. Yes, comments, messages. Yes. All right, we'll talk a little bit more about that. So in so right now as a director, though, you get the responsibility to vet your responses or if something comes into the club, you have to run it by the group or you can actually decide. I can actually decide. There's a, a it's, it's more of a... a a team effort sometimes but i can actually decide sometimes if it feels a little bit beyond my level i would run it by the right. president and it's not like when you're selling a product so it's no, a different it's, kind it's of a vibe. different kind of vibe, it's, yes. a, it's a school club and you are at the university of technology big up your school big up utec <laughs> <laughs> all right so what is your preferred platform and why right no it's it has changed it was instagram and now I'm in love with Twitter. I don't know why. You're in love with Twitter. I feel like it's it's become it it has revamped itself w over time. Why would you say that you love Twitter? I think it's the conversational aspect of it, other than the fact that it makes me laugh. It's not about your image. It's not about what you look like or, you know, focusing on what celebrities look like. It's more of jokes and fun and conversations and speaking about topics that otherwise would be taboo or probably people you know and don't forget don't the downright to nasty shade on twitter because oh, twitter really it, twitter is. twitter the nastiest <laughs> place ever and if you make a mistake in twitter it's like your whole life over drag you i'm gonna talk about, oh about a mistake i did make but that is for later as well too all right so all right so what would be your second platform after twitter definitely instagram all right, so Twitter, IG. It's interesting hearing a 20 year old like Twitter because I kind of felt like Twitter falls in a weird middle ground for age groups, mm -hmm. age demographics. But I think it's a wide span too. Right. But in my mind, I think Donald Trump loves Twitter. Oh, he does. But I find, all right, it does span a range. Mm -hmm. What would be your number three? Wow. I would have to give it to Snapchat because of the filters. Wow, Snapchat is still, still in the game. It still is. As much as people don't check it anymore to say, okay, you have this amount of views and whatever, people use it for the filters all the time. You yeah, know? I was a little bitter when Instagram <laughs> stole the Snapchat th thing yes. and moved it over to the app. A lot of people left Snapchat, Snapchat after, after Instagram that. became that was Instagram. Their thing. That was their thing. Some people have stayed, the loyalists. All right, fine. And I would say for me, I'm going to jump in there and say my number one may actually be a tight fight between Twitter and Instagram enough. Mm -hmm. So I'm the same. I love the fact that people can be witty within a limited range of characters. Yes. And it's, we're coming from 140 characters up and to up to 280. They yes. double it. They double it. I think if you can say something really good in a short space. It's become a skill now, hasn't it? It is an art. It is. It's <laughs> an absolute art form. And I mean, I die when I read some of the things people write. Yes. It's the same way I feel about profile bios on the, in, on the social media oh, accounts. Yes. If you have a really good bio, 
I might follow you. Some of them are so clever. Clever, aren't they? clever, clever, yes. clever. All right, let's go into a little bit of each individual platform and mm-hmm. things that we think about them. And um, I'm sure our listeners will have their own perspectives on this. Definitely. I'm going to say from now, most of this may lie on the Instagram. But let's start with Facebook. Who is using Facebook? Is this like your grandmother's platform? Oh, Who is on it? It really is right now. It really is right. <laughs> no, my mother is on. My mother is not a grandma, and she's definitely on Facebook. Right. Well, my mom is, and you know, she is a Facebook pro right now. She gets it. I don't have to tell her anything. She gets out. I mean, it, you, it was a one-year educational period. <laughs> And I'm dead. I'm glad it's done now where she knows what to do. But she I doesn't think, have to call me. I think my mother gets it fully, asking, oh but God. she she she's she kinda is like a troller. Mm-hmm. I think my daddy kinda trolls too. I think both of them troll a bit. Mm-hmm. But they go on and they like things and they read things. Occasionally they'll post things, they don't really write a lot. Mm-hmm. Because you know, for some of the older people, not knowing whether you're in a direct message versus a profile status yes. comment is a issue. It could get into problems. It still it still has not been uh, distinctively noticed what is what for for some people. So basically, don't write anything, don't and you'll be safe. You'll be alright. But you still use Facebook, right? Uh, currently, the app is not on my phone. No. Wow. And then for me, I only use it because I have business pages connected mm-hmm. to it. If it weren't for those business pages, Nada. and Jada Pinkett, um, Red Table Talk. I'm a big, big, big fan, fan of Red Table Talk. Yes. Outside of those two things, Facebook is dead for me. The app has been off my phone for months now. And don't make me talk about Facebook Messenger, but that's not <laughs> social media. Oh, when that something <laughs> pop up on my phone, I just want to go crazy and delete it. <laughs> All right, fine. That's Facebook. Um, let's move. You know what? Let's move to the big bad Instagram. Cause Instagram mm. is a whole bag of trouble. Um, what kind of Instagram character are you? And to delve into that more, um, <laughs> you can create your own character. Are there categories? I created a few, and here are a few. Thirst trappers. <clears throat> oh, jeez. And for people who don't know what that thirst trap is, it's when you put up a potentially a picture of yourself, maybe partially dressed, there's like nudity involved, but you're doing some other task that is totally unrelated, unrelated. to you being half naked. There you go. And then you direct your caption to the task, mm-hmm. fully well knowing that that's, that not, that's the not the aim right. of the picture. Um, they're trollers, mm-hmm. they're memers. Memes and quotas might be the same. And yeah. their whole profile is just full of that. Full of memes. Um, and then their commenters, like the ones who always have something nasty to say. I don't know. What would you say you are? If you were to look, step away from your profile, mm-hmm. look at your profile from outside looking in. What do you think you're projecting to the world? It's, it used to be so much of a thirst trapper. I will not lie. And I think the older I get, the more I'm like, no. Because oh, now. a self proclaimed thirst trapper. It is a. You, you a 20 year old thirst trapper. Yes, man. <laughs> it's not a brand, you know. Because you know, you, you, your social media is kind of who you are. It's a brand. So you have to be very careful. So I used to be a thirst trapper. Now I care so much about aesthetics. It's like. You don't if feel it's not, like. Oh, no, keep going. So it's like, if it's not. If I don't do a row of three pictures that <laughs> go together, my anxiety <laughs> levels are through the roof. <laughs> and I don't. I love seeing people who. Pay attention to their content. It doesn't necessarily have to be three pictures here, this, there, that right, color. But right. people who pay attention to content, I find it really amazing. So you're like a consistent th- theme or thread yes. going on in, in content. Yes. Um, as you say, so I have a, a musical history named Zia Benjamin. And mm-hmm. when you go on our page, all of the I've pictures have a certain kind of filtered effect. Yes. There's an aesthetic to her fashion, Love but also to how she lays out the pictures. Mm-hmm. And props to my brethren, Rushcam too. Yes. Because before Rushcam was even where he is right now, mm-hmm. even when you watch this page and the layout of his page, the, just the, the composition of the pictures, mm-hmm. I don't know, he just chose really good shots. So attractive. And it makes, um, and scroll, right? makes people follow you. Mm-hmm. Because people just drop on it and they're like, wow, this looks cool. Mm-hmm. So tell me a little bit more about these thirst trap pictures now. So how did would they manifest? You were you mean like so you'd be shirtless pictures? Oh What's my. going on? So the shirt is open, there's no shirt at all. Wow. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> and it used to be a system where you have no photographer, you know. But you set it up. So you're setting it up and you you put your timer Self to work. Time what? <laughs> you put your timer to work. And I look back and I'm like, I w- I had no business doing this at 15, 16. Wow. At 6, used to be worrying about. Wow, this was happening when you were a teen, a little yes. teen. Yes, and you know, it, it, it draws people to your page, but then you realize that, wow. You look back and you're like, I what was I thinking? Well, let's move straight into the consequences of being <laughs> a thirst trapper. Because <laughs> this is the next thing. Let's move into DMs. So when you thirst trap, people slide into the DMs. And again, we'll break down all terms for mm. the non 
non mm. the non trendy direct messages um dms are direct messages which go privately to yes. you directly yes um and to slide into the dm mm-hmm. is when someone who you don't know stumbles upon your profile which usually is public mm-hmm. so they can see your images mm-hmm. in an attempt to communicate with you mm-hmm. tell me about the sliders well i always tell them to be very careful look as my dm slippery <laughs> you will fall and hurt yourself. <laughs> but <laughs> but are you but are you invite them come in for sliding? Well, are you set up the slide? No, they slid. Yeah, they slid. But the whole point, you they were the third, enchanted. They into, were you pulled into the DM. Mm-hmm. How you deal with them, and what are some other ways people have come at you? And <laughs> we're going to keep it neutral here. I'm right. sure, I, and I'll, I'll set up this meaning. As someone in the public, I cat, dog, man, woman, woman puss, everybody coming at my Everything idea. that can breathe and move. Anything that can breathe and move, I'll come in and, and tell me your story. It, it really, you have to, because I always say, and people don't get this about me, I'm a very, one, I'm a very open-minded individual, and people always want to gauge that to see how far my mind really thinks and goes, and two, I'm not someone who aggressively judges people i don't and i think it's based on how i grew up and the things that i went through and so when a dm comes in usually i respond because one i love to make connections and communicate but if it's of an aggressively sexual nature that's where i draw the line a lot of times aggressively sexual nature yeah some people get straight to the point man yeah no i appreciate that i respect Mm. that um and um i will agree with you in terms of me being Mm open-minded um i don't have any hate for any human being or for anything and what i have tried to do as a mature is step outside of me Mm -hmm. and try to think about what the other person is thinking that might be too much work Mm -hmm. but just to give them the benefit of the doubt Mm -hmm. but if people come at me sideways now that just get black when you say sideways what do you mean that is like what americans love saying you know the new york as you say come at me sideways sideways. come at your wrong then come at your wrong Mm -hmm. I don't take it on. So one time like you, I used to respond. Mm-hmm. But this version of me doesn't respond to if it's a male and they say something like SUP, S-U-P mm-hmm. question sign, hey. For me, if you have something to say to me, it needs to be a full constructive mm-hmm. sentence, which is going to lead me to the people who know how to slide in intelligently. Oh, yes. Because some people are still coming at you sexually, you know, mm-hmm. but they're coming to prelude, you with... There's a prelude, man. Because they did their research. They oh, Googled... Yeah. They know your background, and it comes in like, a, "Hey, I really love your song." Mm-hmm. Um, da 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 da. da, 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 da. <laughs> and what they want, really, what they might try to tell me now, that they must say, "Yo, let me see if we can compliment that person, yeah." <laughs> so let that me after me get the compliment, yes, email about five man. messages down or something sideways, I go come. They talk about the reggae soul first to get you in chance. But you know what, though, I respect how clever that is from the approach of sliding into mm-hmm. a DM. Whether I agree with it or I am attracted to it or care for it is a whole different story. But um, big up to the people who slide well. Mm-hmm. Um, I am too old for DM sliding. I don't even slide. I just don't like small talk. <laughs> That's my only problem. Have you slid into a DM? <laughs> <laughs> wow, uncountable. <laughs> uncountable DMs. I've been slid into. How many DMs have I slid into? Are we, un- are we under 50? Yes, we are. We're under 30. All right, that's, I don't even know if that's good. I mean, maybe there's a study on this. Yeah, I don't know study? if there is anything what's good, good about, or bad. What's good mm-hmm. or bad? Um, and you know what? I'm sure this is not um, for single people only. I'm sure a lot of people are sliding. All right, let's come out to the DMs. Mm-hmm. Um, let's just talk about some of the other categories quickly. The trollers just hang around and watch, oh and God. they don't do anything. Not a thing. Maybe they talk to their friends in WhatsApp after watching. The memers just have all of these memes. I have a friend who just has a profile full of memes. My, they don't even have a picture of their face. My favorite people. My favorite you people. You like the memers? I cannot leave them because I don't know what them look like. I, that is true, but I, I think it's something about just creating humor out of things that you would never see. I mean, who would have thought back again would have been something that people would have taken? Casey Fennell made one video. And somebody took two words out of that video and made it into something that was so hilarious to me. I think memes, yes, I get uncomfortable if I can't see a face, but sometimes I just pay attention to the content. All right, fine. So they're the creators of memes, and these people may likely post memes only on their only. pages. Mm-hmm. I mean, who thought a still picture with, with text on it would have be come back with such force? They're so powerful. Some of them are hilarious. hilarious. Um, the quotas are the motivational people, and big up to them too. I need those people too. I follow an awesome page. I've been remember it before I come out of here, but I believe it is called, I'll tell you, I love the stuff that they, that they post because mm-hmm. it's good. And the commenters, what about them? 
the ones who just comment that's they it. just comment <laughs> they don't have anything else to do they just say and they say nasty things actual factual is the page i follow mm-hmm. it's at underscore actual underscore factual underscore they have awesome quotes mm-hmm. Yeah, the ones who wait for something to pop up and they just write nasty things mm-hmm. under some fake profile. Why are you using social media then? What what what's your is your purpose just to peep and comment and leave? It's it's you know like I don't get it. Their purpose is to create trouble. Right. All right. Um, how you feel about blocking and deleting? I think it's necessary, in some instances. I feel like people know how much they can take, and sometimes just unfollowing somebody is not enough. Sometimes you really need to separate yourself from that. Because you have to be honest with yourself. Sometimes you just can't handle it. Some people are okay with, you know, scrolling past something. Some people aren't. I put something on Twitter the other day and Lake mm-hmm. Simad had responded. It was in relation to Block and Delete. And mm-hmm. his comment was self-preservation first. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, when he said it, I respected it. Because I think sometimes we care that we can hurt somebody's feelings. But at the end of the day, if it's affecting your headspace, then maybe mm-hmm. them just need to Block and Delete. Same. I agree. What are the kind of things that would make you block somebody? Oh, somebody who, somebody who just wants to be disrespectful. There are people who just want to wait on a moment that they can, you know, curse somebody out or be negative. I, I can't stand negative energy. Um, weird enough, if I love an artist and there's somebody who's constantly speak, I mean, it's open for for discussion on, on, on you mean like you love spice if i right so let's say i love spice which i do but let's say i love spice and there's somebody who's constantly just saying negative things about her every single day they don't like her and i just you report them i don't want not even report <laughs> I, just, I don't want to see it so if i was following them i would unfollow and if i see where it gets to a point where it's just being downright disrespectful and verbally abusive through of course you know those keyboard um gangsters right i i, I block you I, block I, I all right block. fine and i think all right how you feel about blocking in the context of relationships so you had a breakup mm-hmm. and um you follow your per you was going to be your ex on social media um do you think it's necessary to unfollow them uh, or block them I, or mute them it, uh, what what's the level it depends on how the relationship ended Good. let's say it was really really bad and you you it, it just ended on, on terms that were not civil and I feel like that ends up with a lot of anger. And so you end up saying, okay, I do not want to see this person. I don't want to see them smiling, laughing. I don't want to see them at all. And that's where the blocking completely comes in. I've never had to deal with that. All right, I'm happy for you. I, I think <laughs> I've, I've never always, had to actually. I've yeah. always tried to end relationships. Why are saying relationships like I've had a million and one but i've always tried to end relationships like let's say it has to end it gets to that point i've always tried to end it in a civil way where we don't have to behave like that all right so so your relationships end in a civil way so so that behavior is not necessarily required not you could probably still follow the person see what's going on yeah. and it not killing you yeah well is there I'll a of time i will survive <laughs> uh, all right instagram behaviors all right here's one thing i have seen which is hilarious to me and that is when someone is trying to get your attention mm-hmm. by sequentially liking every Every single picture on your profile i know it's a thing don't worry i think we'll all do it but i'm gonna set some boundaries for this i think if i see a hot girl or whatever and i decide to say i'm gonna go in there i'm gonna like up i have a maximum mm-hmm. of three i think i think i do one two and three and they don't have to go bam 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 mm-hmm. You need to have at least two that are bam bam though. Okay, if you don't get the bam bam, yeah, they won't know if it's like a no. Can one naga give? There's it. a strategy. No, there's a strategy. One naga tell the story. Mm-hmm. Two can give you a bam bam, and them can be like maybe they're looking. Three is like a bam bam bam. Three is confirmation. Three is confirmation. But you see, once you do like ten mm-hmm. or fifteen, mm-hmm. I get concerned. That it, it becomes creepy. <laughs> Just a little bit for me. It, ha- it, it happens, happens to me multiple times. <laughs> Multiple times, and sometimes I don't know what the reason is. Sometimes people you like, know what the reason is. Not the, the reason time. is I am looking, and I want you to know I am looking. looking. So follow me, mm-hmm. but they don't follow you yet. That's the funny part. They just like and leave. You just like and leave. I'm not. I'm not. As I tell you, no, my DM slippery. So I, I assume that everybody else is slippery, and I not sliding. But at this all. person never sliding, and you not sliding back. This person just say them running around the outside. Them running around outside. Of the, <laughs> them run around the outside of the house, and them running with a piece with a fire stick too, like mm. <laughs> with a piece mm. with something from medieval times. Exactly, a torch. A torch. <laughs> they might run around the house with that torch and um pretty much um the really serious ones will move to the next level which is to follow mm-hmm. and then if they follow you that's the only way my attention is, is grabbed the likes the, I, I scroll past the likes you know thank you and we keep it moving there's no way you're going all right fine um all right wait what if though 
following the sequential likes, you go in to the profile and you see things where you like in there. Then I'm liking as well. So now you know I'm looking. Whoa, oh, sequential yeah, yeah, like man. back. You, just, you, you flip the script, man. So, so both are both when I run around with Taj. We are run around with Taj. So the ball is now <laughs> back in your court. I've played my game. You, but you see, this is the thing. It's a game. Mm. Would, so have you ever followed first? Whole heap of times. Because sometimes you, you need you Whole need you need to send a message. Sometimes I go on and I, I like what I see and I click follow. Wonderful. Mm-hmm. Because you're following because you like what you see. Exactly. That is another point we like to make. You know, let's go into following and unfollowing. Mm-hmm. Um, so I have a confession, guys. I don't currently follow Akeem. But here's <laughs> why. Here's why. <laughs> I don't know, Akeem, but here we are True. interviewing each other together on this podcast. So we're taught the truth. The reason I haven't followed Akeem yet is really because I don't know him. And we are interacting in a professional space right now. Mm-hmm. We don't know each other. Um, Akeem has actually followed me. So mm-hmm. actually, Akeem was listening to the podcast. And I know he has supported the podcast. And now that I've met him in person and we've been talking for over 20 minutes, more than likely I'm going to follow him after this. You know why? Because he's a decent young man. I see him. We've met each other and he doesn't look like he's crazy. And um, for me, this is a big deal. Mm. I tend to like to follow things that I either trust, like, can verify in some way. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I just don't want certain noise in my space. So if, I f- if I'm not really sure what it's bringing into my space, mm-hmm. I don't even take it on. True. Um, all right. So wh- wh- how you decide what you follow? Oh, wow. it's, a, it's a process that goes on in my head because I, <laughs> I have different categories of what I like to see. Mm-hmm. Music, travel, uh, fashion. Flesh. I'm sorry. I'm just being, I'm being, <laughs> it's a talking truth. The flesh. Desires are the truth. flesh. I know. We, uh, we yes, all know. We mm-hmm. all know we follow things mm-hmm. that we just like to see. So those and are my yeah. categories. So Music. Yeah, all right, cool. So anything you uh, like, things you're passionate about. Things I'm passionate about. And once I go on to somebody's page and I see something that falls into those categories that I would like to see on a regular basis, the follow can easily come from there. I, I'm, I, it doesn't, it's not that technical for me. I like that. It's, it's just what you like. I agree too. I follow things that I like. It could be fashion. It could but be it's, music. It's so funny. I would never let my following number go above my followers number. Thank you for throwing that one in. And I don't know why. It's a, it's a thing. What is it? It's I a d- real phenomenon. I can't explain what it is. No, because there is a psychological justification that if more people are following you than you follow. You're somehow. That you're somehow. <laughs> it, no, isn't it sad though? It's a little it bit is, sad. It is. But then that phenomenon. But look at the celebrities and it goes up and up. When you become even bigger in the thing, mm. I think they unfollow people. Oh, so yes. their, their following is now so set because people love what they do. Mm-hmm. They realize they don't need a lot they of things distracting need, them anymore. Yes. Or the ones who have zero followers and a million follow. I mean, a million Following followers and follow people. nobody. Mm-hmm. Or they follow one they person. Follow one person. Which is like who, either their husband and wife or the manager or company that manage mm-hmm. them. Are. Interesting, eh? Very interesting. Which brings me to the equal follow for follow mm. so there are people who they have 756 followers and seven matched up <laughs> i love those people yes <laughs> like how do you maintain that the, it is what difficult kind of is it it is difficult you have to track it man so <laughs> as, oh you use the unfollow apps you just have unfollow apps, right so once somebody leave you leave yeah, man, you leave as well when mutual I, agreement <laughs> i mean i'm not, I'm not sticking what around say, like for like like for follow like for follow. follow unfollow for follow no sir hashtag we, that we see it all the time all the time it's weird to me it is it's a but, mind game but i get it though mm-hmm. i get it because it's understandable but then it again speaks to your personality right Mm -hmm. and what's important to you because there's the flip side of that the ones who follow everything and they have less followers so that to that person being seen or whatever the reason for having more followers Mm -hmm. is not important to them they just want to follow everything what they like Mm -hmm. how about when you go into a space like you go to an event at school at a party you go somewhere you meet somebody for the very first time and I know now people don't take numbers anymore. That's like mm-hmm. something of the of the stone ages. They're going to say, what's your Instagram handle? That's the first question. And then you give it to them, either hesitantly or willingly, and they follow you. Mm-hmm. And then they say, make sure you follow back, you know. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about that Boy, follow back something? There? Because if I go on your page and I don't like what I see, that becomes <laughs> a problem. But what if you decide right in the moment? So you're on the profile, they're right in front of oh you. Boy. Oh, that one's when the phones are open, <laughs> the Instagram is open, and then just press follow. And you did it with your phone open, pan them profile, and you're going, hmm. 
<laughs> you know? So mm. I will follow in the moment. <laughs> Unless it's something that's not outrageous. Because right. I would vivi- I would tell you, like, what's like what's going this on? This is here? your content. <laughs> but yeah, I I if I if I don't want you to feel listen, I will follow and then if so, if afterwards I feel like I'm uncomfortable, you I'll, unfollow. I'll unfollow. There's nothing wrong with that. Not no wrong with that. And right? you can hit me up and ask me a question, I'll tell you why. All right, mm-hmm. fine. So you're not afraid to be you're enough. not afraid to be direct about why you've stepped no, out of a space. No, I think we have to talk truth about these things. You have to tell be, be direct, not disrespectful, but be direct in 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 why you do things. I like that. Be direct, but mm-hmm. not disrespectful. Right. There's a difference. Mm-hmm. All right. We soon come out of Instagram, but one <laughs> other thing I find funny when you press the heart tab in the Instagram app, you have two sections. There's a section mm-hmm. called you. Mm-hmm. And there's a section called following. Oh, yes. And these two sections are always very funny to me because which section is your default section? So I stay on the you it side stays in you, where, and where I see who likes the stuff I put up. I see who follows me. And that's all I really see. When you go over on the following side now, mm. I can see what, what other people follow and what they like. Or what the people who you follow are doing. What right. the people I follow are doing. Mm-hmm. And I, for some reason, don't really give a crap what they're doing. Mm-hmm. But some people stay over here. So, I think them enough. I think them just love when I see what I go on. Mm-hmm. Because you are, you want to see which 10 pictures I've liked. Yes. And it matters to you. And then you're going to use that to formulate whatever you want. To think of me, right. Which, which, which is what we do anyway. We all do it. All the time. I can summarize that with our Instagram profile in five minutes and I have it down. Skill. Is that skill? <laughs> it's, a a, skill. it's an actual <laughs> art form. So, you know, we kind of keep them guessing on the following side. I'm going to like some food. I'm going to like some skin. Let's mm-hmm. just like about bag of things. Since y'all try to build a story around me. Mm-hmm. But on that note, before we leave Instagram... You have ever seen a picture and just immediately just click the likes to see who's liking it? Yes. And when you see who's liking it, do you then come to some conclusions about whatever? What if he's like, I don't know. So, guys, you, you would look at somebody's picture and you click to see, all right, who are the likers? And sometimes you look, it's like all females. Sometimes it's all males. Sometimes yeah, it's all no. business profiles. We are no. So you have, to, and then you, you draw an assumption mm-hmm. right there. Mm-hmm. Right yeah, there. Me, 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 like I'm well and aware that when I post certain pictures that there are a chunk of women that like it, but mm-hmm. there are also a chunk of men that like yep. it. Sometimes even when I click on the likes and look at it, I'm like, damn, where are these men You're coming from? Work. Like what is going on here? Yep. But I mean, yeah, but people do see these things and they are people real. Mm-hmm. Hey, my profile is open. Whoever want to like it can like it here. Yeah? But not fight out nobody here. And business. it's coming it's it's funny, as we close out on Instagram, remember the days when everybody's profile used to be private. It used to be like follow me, you request to you follow. You requested me. to follow. And I'll I'll check. So it's a verification. Okay, like some people profile still pretty private here. So my profile is a <laughs> business profile so what that helps me i know how many people check my profile on average in a week i know what right yeah clicking. statistics oh yes mine is a business profile right. as well too yeah no, because statistics are helpful. important they you are. know your percentage of males to females you mm. know what people are liking you know what posts are doing well yeah and for what you're studying it would be important as it well it is it is all right instagram you got a lot of us it let's move instagram. by instagram let's <laughs> move over to twitter my and, place uh, your place <laughs> your home your place um tell me what makes you happy about Twitter? Twitter we said some already. If I am sad, Mario, I mm-hmm. get up one day and I'm feeling like, listen, I don't like how this day is going. I give myself 15 minutes on Twitter. <laughs> 15 minutes of scrolling. I it's hope f- that's after you said your morning it's prayer. after I've said, thank you, Lord, for waking me up this morning. And, you know, I, I, I take that fresh breath of air, open the windows, and I'm like, let me see if I can pick myself up. Twitter does, it never fails me. Depending on what you follow, still come. I don't it follow like careless things on Twitter, but I have a bridge and you see him follow one bag of carelessness. Yes. And every day I'm screenshot and say, I'm like, what are you following? Why are you following I this? follow a set of people on Twitter that are just, they are about the jokes. And if there's something funny going on, they will make a joke about it until there's nothing left to say. Yo, no, it, it, I'm not going to go into my story. <laughs> this episode is too light and fun to tell the story about my tweet that was misunderstood as misogyny. That's oh, all I say. I was called Lord. a misogynist. This misogynist, this misogynist bullshit. Mm-hmm. Yo, it got hot. Mm-hmm. Anyway, my intentions weren't misogyny. I'm not a misogynist, just no, for guys, clarity. That's not the intention And at all. Um, I deleted it. Mm-hmm. So that's another thing too, deleting. Mm-hmm. We should be empowered to delete. I, I wanted to be tough and be like, yo, I'm going to leave this car. Never that made it mean. On uh, my page. On uh, my page. Gonna de- and I was like, shit, this thing is spiraling <laughs> like out it's hot of And car. I have a reputation, right? Yo, and I couldn't really catch everyone. So people would catch it in different pieces of the tweet. Mm-hmm. So even when I had explained to somebody that this wasn't it and explained to somebody else that this wasn't it, Somebody caught much. the first tweet again it's and misinterpreted it. So I said, yo, delete all. And I deleted. Mm-hmm. And life went back to normal. 
for the most part, apart from the people who screenshot it and have me out feet still, mm. which will happen, but hey, the, such is life. J- the thing that, or whatever goes on social media is now it's out there for it the world. Permanent. Because people fast with the screenshot, you know, what? it's easy you now. So you have to be careful. <laughs> but yeah, worse, the, the iPhone, then we have this video record thing. Screen uh, so, record. so you scroll so through you, all the tweets so to see the video. If you think your video mm-hmm. did um, private. Oh, jeez. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I believe in the delete. I think if it gets to a point where it's getting too hot, too heavy, some, you just delete it. Yeah. It's easier to tackle that way. When 15, 20, 30 responses coming in at you and you don't know what to do, it's, it's, it's difficult sometimes. I say you Olivia Pope it. You watch Olivia Pope? You handle it? Yeah, you watch Scandal? In what I, I used to. Oh, that's, yeah, that's her. Yeah, she handles it. She handles it all the time. She, um, whatever, in white hat. Most suits, times I do. It. Most times my back is broad enough to handle whatever comes through. But sometimes I'm just like, listen, you want to make trouble and I'm not engaging. So you go make trouble with somebody else. That's fair. And I'd, I'd like to think that you also think very carefully about what you tweet before you tweet it. Oh, I try my best. I think I very do. carefully. I read And I never used to. I think very carefully. But So when I get into that situation, it's odd for me. It was my only situation of in recent times. Mm-hmm. But otherwise, I usually um pretty careful. I never used to do that. And now I realize that workplaces love social media handles now. They want to know. Mm-hmm. Wh- and and the like, U.S. Embassy does too. The U.S. Embassy has, and I'm like, listen, when <laughs> I go back to the visa, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about them. So looking. now I watch what I say you all know, the time. All the time. Don't call certain people and I'm like, can them? this be something that when screenshotted and shown to my future boss, you know, what, what, what are the implications? And then I move forward, but sometimes I can't bother. Absolutely. All right. We're going to run out of Twitter. We love mm-hmm. Twitter. That's what we say. And it's text. And I think anybody who can put together something cool. Those characters, pretty dope. amazing. Amazing. Um, Snapchat. I think Snapchat is, me call it the Kalis app. It have two roles. I like what you said. The filters are cool, mm-hmm. but I feel all sorts of nasty things go on. Messy. Me- and I think it's, it's, it's what Snapchat grew on was the, not anonymity. That's not the word I'm looking for. Mm-hmm. It was so quick. The disappearing pictures oh that you cannot, oh, the screenshot warning if you take a picture. The, so you know. So you know you if they screenshot, but if then they have it. It's, if it's screen recorded, if it's screenshotted, when you say they still have it. That's the problem. They have it. Yeah. But if you if you have somebody you sending something dirty to that might screenshot it, maybe you shouldn't be sending it to you them, right? Should, that's not the person you should be sending it to at all. You ever send anything dirty on Snapchat? Oh, wow. Your mother going to listen to this? Snapchat, if mommy's listening, I think she needs to because I think she doesn't know where my headspace is at now at this age. Oh, God. <laughs> and I think it would help. Don't let me get into the trouble. But I'll, no, man, I'll send it to mommy afterwards. But, Don't um, send it to her. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> but um, yeah, man, Snapchat is the app where you feel more comfortable to send those things that may be a bit I've sent I'll, I'll admit it it's fine same to send those things that are a bit what's the word I can't tell you wrong mm-hmm. that word you guys know what I'm talking about you can you know th- that word to to people who you supposedly trust trust like curious about mm-hmm. I don't know mm-hmm. I, yeah, yeah, I yeah. don't know yeah, yeah. it's not making me uncomfortable no I'm not talking about it anymore but I have people come on yo the, that filter yo Which this one? is funny the filter with the hair mine never ever opened up but there is I mean, all the snapchat filter them are a little bit interesting but there was a filter with um the male look like female females with look the like females. Yes. the males look like females and it had a long wig like it a nice a nice yo the man them they going panic. they ran through it I thought it was hilarious it was really them. funny and the brother there the L- L- the vine out one of the comedians yes. he did the his video was did, hilarious did, 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 with, the the song. with the song <laughs> he was cartel and spice at the Yo, same time think of Ellie I, I, honestly it's Ellie right yes that was hilarious alright so fine the filters you have a favorite filter Oh my God! Anything that makes my skin look clear. Margaret. Oh, you like the clean skin yes, one? Yes, man. Me like the one that made me look like a gangster, and does the voice change? So the one that where it made me sound really, really, really gangster. Really rough. Those, made me sound rough. I love mm-hmm. them there. <laughs> uh, our YouTube. You have a YouTube channel, Akeem, and people need to follow you. Tell I them do. about it. Right now. And what's the name of the show? Uh, it's Kim Eight Seven Six. So the brand is is it's really standard right across the board. And it's really And that's K-E-E-M 876. Yes. Mm -hmm. K-E-E-M 876. Right now it's lifestyle. People send in questions all the time. They ask me for advice. And I'm like, why not make this into a thing where I can tell people what I think instead of just sending a text? Other people might be struggling with the same issues. So we do challenges from time to time, questions. The last segment I did was Ask Keems, where people sent in questions that were like word, like a paragraph, and they wanted to know what I thought. And I mean, it's just so fun to do. Eventually, I plan to get even more into it, the editing, getting a camera, because right now it's just an iPhone, a friend, and opinions. 
I like that you're using what you have, yeah. which is awesome. That's like your version of Talk It track. really is my version of Talk But true. video, which is more intense, actually. It is, because people are seeing, you know, the rough days. The rough days. Because I don't always get a haircut before I shoot people. I'm sorry. When I go to do a shoot, like to do the video, I'm just sometimes I'm look rough. And guess what? Today, I'm actually doing audio, and I'm actually look like him get a haircut. I so tried. Go, Yesterday, you, yes, I did. I would even have him on, on video. <laughs> All right. All right. So um, what are the things you love about YouTube video, the video component? and what else i do i feel like it it, it now brings out a, a platform for celebrities to give a visual component because you know you hear music all the time mm-hmm. so you want to see where their mind was at when they created this song how can they put it into visuals i love that um i used to love the whole aspect of youtubers and i realized everybody's doing the same right thing. right so you have to try to differentiate yourself so i really tried to not do the the, the challenges there are people who fake being a couple to be on YouTube. I can't mm, do that. Interesting. I can't. Is that social media space that I like? I'm on YouTube a lot. I think everybody's on YouTube. There's so much to learn there. Love it. Um, I don't really have many problems with YouTube. I mm. think people function. If they like things, they subscribe to it. If they don't, they don't. And it's re- usually you get suggested based on what, what you, you watch. What you like. So yeah, YouTube wins all, mm. all around. Mm. What's up for me now? So now we have the status section because Dotty Facebook. It's been there French. for a while. We see, I'm coming from a generation of all phases of WhatsApp. What the status back in the day, Akim, let me give you a history lesson, used to just be text. Yes. It used to just be text alone. And people used to check that to see what mood you were in. Yeah, exactly. How they <laughs> exactly. How <laughs> you I'm you posted it. Women they like, you know, in the gym or whatever. Mm-hmm. So um, now that Facebook has acquired everything, mm-hmm. that would be WhatsApp and um, Instagram, the status is now pretty much an Insta story, which, which drives me insane. What's but, snap? What's Snap? That's they call the name. It. They Here's give my it. issue with What's Snap, mm-hmm. which is why I don't use it. Mm-hmm. I've used it a little bit now just to promote the podcast, but it means that everybody who has your telephone number in your contact list, if you make it public and don't yeah, man, block up people, they mm-hmm. can't see it. Mm-hmm. But you know who's in my address book? My pastor, my auntie, my uncle, and my what's mother, up, Mario? everybody in a day WhatsApp because the WhatsApp connected mm-hmm. the address book. But not everybody's on my Instagram. Mm-hmm. My younger friends are on my Instagram. Mm-hmm. My mother is not. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I get it. So I don't move all the content from my Insta story into my WhatsApp. Smart. Because the two don't align. They do not. I don't put anything over there. Mm-hmm. You use it? I do. You use all of them? I do. You use a Facebook one too? But no, you say no, the app is not on your phone. But so hear what? I will, what I do will, you like about the WhatsApp? I just think all right, you're giving, because not all your friends are avid Instagram users or other platforms. And so it just gives them a chance to see, hey, what's I came up to today? You and know, technically, how's most going? of your friends are going to be in WhatsApp. Yes. So people actually respond to the posts they, that you make? Every single day. I don't even know what that feels like. Nobody responds to anything they I post. Because swi- it's just like swiping up and typing a message. So I'll post like a snippet of something I sang and they're like, oh my God, this sounds good. Post it on Instagram. It's very interactive. But I will not shy away and say some people are blocked. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Maybe I should sing more on my WhatsApp. You should. All right. That's a good idea. You're giving me a thought. <laughs> that might be a generational thing. All right. So, all right, fine. So WhatsApp is now social media as mm-hmm. well. Good Lord. Um, All right, so there's so much to talk about, but um, and we have already spoken about so much already. Let's touch a couple of other generic social media topics. And um, how do you feel about people sharing content that's not theirs to share? And let me be a little bit clear. I go to your wedding. You're a celebrity. They have not given us a hashtag to use because they haven't. And I'm videotaping. And without thinking about whether you'd want this public or not, I decide to share it on my profile Mm -hmm. and tag you too. Mm -hmm. You think that's okay? Do people need to give a disclaimer that don't record? Um, and even if I haven't given a disclaimer, do you think people need to be sensitive enough to kind of figure out what do you put up and what don't you I put up? I think they should. They should be sensitive based on the moment. I've been to weddings where people have been like, can we wait until the bride and the groom have decided to, you know, put, because he, and I've seen it happen with celebrities where guests post pictures before the celebrities do. And it's a big thing. That's exactly what I'm talking about. And I about. think people are allowed to feel that way because that's their moment. And give them the chance to, you know, go ahead and post that first and do what they want to do before, you know, you go and spoil their moment. Yes, I agree with you. And another topic I want to touch is the whole catfishing thing. So I like that show on MTV, Catfish. Love it. I'm um, obsessed. Uh, let's explain to the viewers. Are you telling them what, what do, how you define a catfish? So a catfish is a person who uses somebody else's photos or somebody else's likeness 
to kind of bait someone into communicating with them, usually for relationship purposes or sexual Lovely purposes. definition, Akeem. Damn That's man. Best, best way I can put it. I love it. <laughs> All right. So um, nobody really cares to use my images as a catfish. Lies. So what about you? Tell me about, have you ever been, have you been catfished or been used? I have not been caught where, I, I have not been caught in a process where I was talking to someone and I found out that they were catfish. Never has, ne- has never happened to me because if you can't video call me, <laughs> you're not going to work out. Work good. But I've had people use my pictures. Right. So I've been the You've bait. You've been the bait. I've You've been, been used bait. as the bait. And it came about where somebody was like, hey, I didn't know you had another profile. I followed it, man. And I was like, what? You're like, no, I don't oh, have I'm another not. profile. What are you talking and so about? they sent me the link immediately. And this is probably like three days after the profile had been set up. And I was like, hmm. So I was like, no, this is not me. And then I looked at who was following the profile. My friends are following this profile. And I'm just like, since when me name Javon or John? And I'm like, come on, people. Yeah, be smart. But people make backup profiles all the time. Mm. And that's why I'm always like, guys, these are my ex- like these are my only profiles. Da, 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 da. So it's <laughs> But that's when you know you're both you know, when people want to use a picture for well, create profile, listen, you're both, you know? Partially I was like, Oh my god, this is crazy. I can't believe somebody did this. And another part was like, wait. Oh look here, they kinda feel what good about it. What is going on here? <laughs> I was like, come on, come on. That is hilarious. All right, let's move into something a little bit more serious. And there's something I like to talk about, and that is the youth using social media and, mm-hmm. uh, and how parents also police their children. And we're talking about minors now. And um, so many crazy things have happened through social media because it's mm-hmm. so easy. Um, should kids have Instagram profiles that they control under 18, which you had? I think kids can have Instagram profiles that they control on their own. I think it depends on, it's partially dependent on your level of parenting, but it's just the the intuition of that child. No matter how much parenting you get, sometimes you go off on a tangent and you do the wrong things. But I I had an Instagram profile from 2000 and, oh my God, 2013. How old were you? I was 14 at the time. So you had a you had so one. So yeah, and I remember when I remember. Or did your did your parents police the profile? No. The first profile I ever had was Facebook. I was 12, Mario. 12, mm. 12, 12. 12. And, and I, my sister set that up. And I remember when she said it to my mom cuz it was my first time. No, it was my first time. But I was visiting my sister and you. She's like, "I'm going to give Akima a, 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 a Facebook profile." And my mother was like, "No, you're not. No, you are not putting him on Facebook. He's not ready for Facebook." And I was like, but my sister went and did this anyways. You see how generations are? Your <laughs> first Facebook profile was 12. Yes. My first, book face, my first fa- Facebook profile was when it came out. Mm. No, like it was out. That time it was only for college students. It wasn't for the public. Yes, it was. Yes. I was 27. Wow. But that's just because it was when it was coming out. Yes. It, Interesting, I mean, eh? But I don't know if I would have been able to navigate Facebook at 12. Meaning I don't know how it affects the mind because I'm... I'm a grown man when I'm dealing with Facebook. How does that? How do you feel social media has colored you as an individual being introduced to it as a teen? I was so young and I was not prepared for a lot of the things. You saw a lot of things you think you probably I shouldn't have been seen? a lot of things I think I, it wasn't my time to see. <laughs> if you had a child right now, would you let them have one when they became a teenager based on what you've experienced? Based on what I've experienced, I think children learn things before you tell them. <laughs> So as much as you think, oh, they don't know yet and protect, oh, no, they know. So they you can't know. hide anything. So you can't really hide. But I think there's a, because even though parents are running Instagram profiles for their kids and I'm like, at what age do you hand it over? But that's a whole different topic. How do right, you feel about that? I think it, it's, 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 because right now your child is not, they don't understand what is going on and you are now using them for, some people use it just to spread happy moments and some people use it as a tool. A marketing money. tool, right? There are people who use that for endorsements. We're not calling them, but no, we, God, we know no. them. I probably follow some of them. <laughs> I do too. But um, and being introduced to it at such a young age, I was just, I just wanted to be friends with friends. I just wanted to know what my friends were you doing. Wanted, yeah, you were tapping into friends. You weren't trying to get into yeah. crazy spaces yet. I wanted to meet new people. I, wanted to, I, just, I was just so curious. What is Facebook? Why is it so hype? And then after I got onto it, I was like, oh. And then it, they evolved every single year, every month there was something new. And right, right, right. At that point, there would be a lot of evolution. Eh? I would say I'm fine with how I grew up with it, but not everybody is in the same mental space that I am. So in summary, what are some of the things you think parents should do? They sh- Monitoring, I think you have to. You think the parent should have a profile so they can see what the child is looking at? Yeah, man. I mean, meaning like if it's a well, the child would should have a private profile, I think. Mm-hmm. If you're a minor, I think your profile should be private. That's something I think I is a think start. so too. You filter who is able to follow the you. Parent, I've always said that. 
I hate the idea of parents on social media, but I think if you're going to have a minor on social media, you should follow them. Yes, you should. So you can see what they're posting. Yes, you should. But them can very well block it, block the Insta they story can, and all of these things. I, they can do all I these clever f- things. I have a friend, he's, he, he figured out his mother was on Instagram and before she even got a chance to follow him, he blocked her. He blocked her. Mm. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. but I'm like, no man, she going to see the old tyrant that she has raised. She's going to find out. <laughs> she's going to find that out you're sooner a tyrant. or later. <laughs> All right, Akim, this has been so much fun. We're not wrapping yet. We have a few more things we want to talk about. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to touch on social media detoxing and how important it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had a period where I went through some ish, a little situation. Oh, leap or something. And um, I couldn't be on anymore because I was overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. And I get overwhelmed sometimes a lot just by all these multiple images. It's like, I tell people, it feel like somebody flashing a lot of things in front of your brain. Mm Mm-hmm. And sometimes I just, it's like flashing lights. I'm going to have a seizure. Yes. How do you feel about this? I think detoxing is necessary in all aspects of life. Too much of one thing becomes a bad thing. So, and it doesn't even matter how much time you take. Because sometimes you take a lot of time off and you don't do anything with that time. You just say, oh, I'm not on it anymore. But you're not working on yourself. You're not going out there to live. And, you preach. And you get right back to it. And it's like, you never left. You, you were always in that space where you were looking at somebody else's phone while they were scrolling. You know? But I've taken the detox, maybe not for months. Because, boy, I can't. Because of my line of work and school and the career path that I'm going into, I can't take a detox for, for more than a month. If I have to, if it becomes a serious issue, I will. But I've never gone over two weeks so mental health first right it's very important your mind matters i encourage it really does your, your, your i mind can't matters. remember where i hear that saying but i know it's very important and i'll follow somebody on twitter that has said it and your mind really matters take care of it and guys i know today we didn't have a lot of statistics but that's perfectly fine today was a fun episode right. getting um both <laughs> myself and akin's perspectives on the different social media but there's tons of research out there that shows that social media is affecting the mental health of teenagers mm-hmm. and um, i encourage you to look at it there are good things and bad things um their body image issues definitely increased mm-hmm. but they actually claim it improves um socializing for the socially awkward teen yes. who may not feel confident for they can actually yeah. right Right, operate be- behind the gets them started the screens of social media mm-hmm. um but that's for a whole nother day oh lord we <laughs> are gonna wrap up this episode and we're gonna do something a little fun and i call it the social media challenge where i ask akim which platform he would use to do one of the following akim get yes. ready uh where would you post an emotional story uh instagram definitely instagram Instagram, mm-hmm. interesting. I'm a bigger following over there, you know. So it's yeah, I I go with Instagram. Really, Sadly. I would post an emotional story. Cause I don't have enough characters on Twitter, Mario. I can't. I don't. Maybe know. Facebook if I wanted to type it. If it oh, was video, yeah, I would yeah. use Instagram. I agree. Yeah, yeah. What if you wanted to make an intellectual statement? Mm. Twitter. Definitely. This Twitter. is where I work on my characters. <laughs> I'm getting in it. Uh, yes, definitely Twitter. Let's get it into 280 <laughs> characters right now. Um, uh, send a nude pic. No, oh, Snapchat, man. It's the safest way to go. They tell you what is happening. Agreed. Snapchat. Mm-hmm. Um, thirst trap. We already know <laughs> this. Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Instagram. Uh, I've run out of categories. If you can oh, throw two at me, off the happening? top of your head, and then we'll uh, say. I would say, you know, what platform would be the best to promote your business? But people are using all. Oh, definitely not Snapchat because that, that's more personal. But for business promotion, where are you likely driven it to? Facebook and Instagram, but they're they're tied they're together. Tied anyway. together. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah, Facebook and Instagram. Uh, Listen to Mario, guys. He knows what he's talking about. I think I know something. <laughs> I think I know something. Guys, this has been a wonderful time with yes. Akeem Beckford, who I guess, you know, I think he's done well. And he'll probably, uh, he'll pro- I'll probably bring him back one day. Or maybe I'll go on his YouTube channel. You never How know. about that? And Akeem also sings. I mean, so you can see that on his Instagram. Mm-hmm. Again, he mm-hmm. is at Kim876. And that's Kim. Dot. Kim.876. Dot at Kim.876. Don't slide into his DMs. They're slippery. Slipper bad. And keep watching him. He's doing good <laughs> things and will continue to do great things. Akim, thank you for being here, my friend. Thanks for having me. Bye. Hey guys, I hope you really enjoyed episode number seven with young boy Akeem, real young boy Akeem and old young boy Mario. It was lots of fun and feel free to weigh in on social media. Do's, don'ts, pet peeves that you um, are aware of on Instagram on my page at Mario Evan by just commenting under the post episode number seven on social media. As always, 
is this experience of talk truth has been so amazing in terms of sharing with you and hearing the truths and stories and experiences of others and i thank you so much for taking your time every week to listen feel free to follow us at talk through ja on twitter and follow me at mario evan on instagram and if you like what you hear please head over to itunes and subscribe rate and review this podcast if there are any topics you'd like to discuss or you have any feedback, feel free to shoot us an email at talktruthja at gmail.com. And don't forget, we have show notes on the website, talktruthja.com. And that's where you can get links. You can follow the points that we discussed in the show. You can um, see the guests. You can find them IG handle. You can troll them and stalk them and all of these things. So um, definitely check out the show notes on the website boy it's always a pleasure and i'm looking forward to next week already so until next time this is talk truth where your truth shall become your power and set you free see you next week